This podcast is brought to you by sarahraven.com, which is home to everything you need for a truly beautiful and productive garden. You'll also find great and essential gardening kit and stylish, lovely things to have in your house to bring the outside indoors, all inspired by the garden and the house being tied together. There's also plenty of garden inspiration, how-to videos and specialist growing guides. So head over to sarahraven.com today to discover even more. Welcome to Grow, Cook, Eat, Arrange, the podcast of me, Sarah Raven. And today I have two dear friends, Connie and Jessie Booth. And um, I'm going to describe how I met them and why I've invited them onto the podcast. But before I do that, this episode, I thought we would theme on the Grow Your Own Party um, kind of idea, really, which is that both of them are incredibly talented gardener florists and cooks, in the case of Connie particularly, and Jess is the florist particularly. But the thing that they believe in more than anything is kind of pushing the boat out and not doing sort of discreet little dinner parties for four, but doing events like inviting 50 friends down onto the beach. They live in Dorset, in Bridport, and just cooking for everybody and having flares for everybody. And so grow your own party is just a theme that seems to fit incredibly well with them. And also, I love it too. And it's what I've always wanted to do here is grow as much of the food and the flowers as you possibly can for any event that we do here. And so that's why I've invited them on. So hello, Connie and Jess. Hi. Hello, Sarah. Hello. So I first met Connie, who's actually the slightly younger of the two, of the two sisters. There are three sisters, in fact. Three and a half. Three and a yeah. half, of course. <laughs> three and a half sisters, that's right. So we'll, we'll come on to that. But um, And I first met Connie because she uh, wrote to me and said, could she come and be an intern? And she was actually the first sort of intern, so-called, I mean, they weren't called that then, uh, that we'd ever had. And um, we were actually going away, but she still came and she lived in the Oast House when she was, I think, about 18. So just when she was leaving school and working out what she wanted to do. And that is now uh, about 12 years ago, 10 or 12 years ago. And so she stayed here for a month and we all totally fell in love with her. And it was incredible that somebody so young had already kind of learned so much about growing veg. And I was, I was just so impressed by that. And then through Connie... I then met Jess, who's her slightly older sister, and it was very fortuitous. At the time, a friend of mine in America called Sarah Rhiannon, who ran this wonderful florist called Saipur, was looking for somebody to work with her. And and Jess had just got back from Dubai, I think it was, and was looking for another opportunity. And so off she went. Anyway, it's lovely to have you both here. So why don't you tell us a little bit about, you know, how you set up the business called Jurassic and and what it is. It's lovely to be here. Thank you for having us, firstly. So as Sarah said, I trundled off to New York to go and work for Sarah Hannon to learn the ins and outs of floristry and big scale American weddings. Sarah also had a farm in upstate New York where she grew incredibly beautiful flowers and veg that I found really exciting and inspiring. So when I left New York three years later and returned to London to start Jurassic with Con, growing flowers was something I was really keen to do and made a lot of sense, especially with Con's growing experience with Sarah. We grow flowers that you can't really buy at the market, interesting varieties. And when you grow all your own, you get odd and funky shapes that usually get weeded out in large scale production. And I find that these wonky wiggly stems bolted veg, curly sweet peas, all these homegrown jazzy wiggly shapes do all the arranging for me. And I guess a quite Jurassic signature style. And so I'd really like to ask both of you um, about your 12 favorite plants to grow, because this is a gardening show, um, (laughs) to grow for grow your own party or event or wedding or whatever it is. And I thought maybe because uh, Jessie is primarily the florist and Connor's primarily the cook, maybe you could alternate um, with uh, going 
you know, one of you, Je Jess could do the flour and then Kong could do the veg and we could work through your, your 12 best. And I will feed in with any sort of uh, variety tips that I can add as we go along. But so it would be, it would be great to, to carry on with that theme. Okay. So first of all, Jess, what's your number one? My number one, I'm going to kick off with bearded iris. Yes. Because that is what we've been using a lot recently. And also it's my personal favorite. I seem to remember actually years ago, Sarah, you suggested that they were a bit of a nightmare. So you only get them for two weeks of the year. Yes. <laughs> But and they look terrible for the rest of it. And they look terrible for the rest of it, which is totally true. <laughs> well, that's a bit of a downer, wasn't I? <laughs> <laughs> but we went against your advice and we went big on them from this amazing grower in France. Yes. Yeah, they're called Kaya Iris. Kaya Iris. Yeah. And we just went big and we planted up a whole load. Yeah. And they've done so well. And they do only come for two weeks at the end of May, but they are just insane. Mm. And we did a wedding yesterday on yeah, Saturday, Saturday and just harvested the whole lot took them up to Oxfordshire popped them all in glass vases mm. and that was that was done and they just wow. absolutely crazy they were so luxurious and so theatrical they just fun. made the wedding it was so fun with their beards yeah so they just look so luxurious I always think which they are because they're crazy yeah they know, are they it's really such are. a silly investment for such a short amount of time, but they're really worth it. And they also give you amazing scent, don't they? I mean, lots of them are so They perfumed. smell incredible. Mm. Unbelievable, yeah. And they weirdly, like, last, even though they die quickly, they always have, like, a, our ones have, like, a bud beneath. So even mm. when one goes, the next one comes, and you have three on a stem, so you sort of get the symphony of, like, they go on and on and on, mm. which yeah. is quite exciting. Do you have a favourite? I do, actually. It is, I can't even say it. I, I know you're not a big fan of the old variegated, Sarah, but I am. Good. And there's one called Grape Snakes, ah. which is sort of purpley and beige. Wow. It looks yeah. quite incredible with a sort of beige tongue, wow. hairy tongue. Well, they were all over the Chelsea Flower Show this year, weren't they? They were kind yeah. of like the absolute plant of the moment. So good old Jess, you preceded yeah. trends by, <laughs> by five years and you weren't, you weren't curtailed by my negativity. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think the ones we grow are a bit more beefy. I think yeah. um, it seems to be quite the fashion at the moment, these, is these bent and end irises, yes. which are really beautiful, but a bit more fragile. Yeah. Yeah, and these these French ones we have that we're using for the yeah, best over kind a of, meter and a half tall. They're, they're honestly they're yeah kind of over a meter tall. Wow. They're really big. They're like big, big women, know, huge like loud ladies. And what's the, <laughs> what's your soil type? Because I mean I grow them here, but and they don't love it to be honest. But I mean I still love them for May. Yeah. What's your soil? It's really a bit of an anomaly really we grow them this one patch we grow out the back of our dad's cottage right and to be honest it's not where we grow the rest of the flowers the rest of the flowers we have in a bigger field, patch, field mm. near um on our mum's farm okay but at dad's it's this very pathetic kind of sandy soil yeah yeah, yeah. And it nothing doesn't hold any there. water and not, almost nothing else grows there, but the wow. irises love it. They yeah. do well for it. And we do nothing. I wish I could give more advice on the success of them beyond that, but I, I, we do nothing to them except clear off their dead leaves, at, you know, right at the end of the summer to stop them rotting the corms. But really, we do nothing to them and they just do their own thing. Yeah, good. Okay, so Con, on to you. So what's your first edible? Well, I thought what I actually quite like doing is growing things that I could get a lot of at once mm. because that's what we usually need. If we are throwing a party and cooking for lots, I want to be able to pick a humongous bowl of peas mm. or beans mm. rather than trotting off to the supermarket and buying them in fiddly little plastic packets. Yes, yes. I like growing peas. Mm. which I can pick masses and masses and masses of in one go. You like things um, in glass? 
I like things in glut. Yeah. So peas would be number one at the moment. Yes. We did an event 10 days ago for, it was a collaboration with some tailors in London and we threw a drinks party for about a hundred people came and I just picked, I took up to London huge, actually I also took some from a very great nearby farm called Springtail of mm. these Monge 2 variety, mm. like a sugar snap pea mm. called Nairobi. And I just filled these glass fluted bowls with these peas with some ice cubes in it. It was a really hot evening. Mm. And that was the can- canapé. They were like bowls of sweets. Lovely. And so crunchy and so delicious and absolutely no effort bar picking them whatsoever. I think Nairobi is just the best. So I'm very glad that that's the one I would have advise you to. I love that one. Yeah. And um, I know that you also do a, a black one that I'm growing this year called Blau Shocker. Yeah. I yeah. never know to yeah. say, which is a great looking pea. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So peas are a big one for me. I I, I, I never have had any problems with birds or anything. They they seem to, sometimes I put that funny wiggly tape. Yes. In the, in the early spring. Yes. Yes. And they go down. Yes. But yeah. Great. What's peas. Okay, so Jess, number two. I would say sweet peas. Yeah, lovely. Just because you, they go on and on and on. And again, you can pick loads of them. Pick loads and loads and loads. And I use them. I'm not, when it comes to events, I'm not a big fan of using greenery as a filler. Mm. So for me, sweet peas would probably be my filler Mm. if I Mm. need, if I'm doing lots of table arrangements and they just, you can easily fill a whole table with incredible scent and also the colours I find very handy. Mm. I grow lots of like uh, cool tones. Right. I feel like lots of lilacs or light blues or cool pinks really help with colour palettes. So, I don't know, lots of the blends and makes the other colours pop. I find the cool tones. Great. Do that. And if you grow them, then you can cut crazy, you know, not just like the stems. I cut long trailing bits yes. with loads of them on. And yeah. I love them. Perfect. So that's them. Right. Con? Um, beans. Yep. Again, maybe that's a bit boring. Peas, no. beans. <laughs> um, again, because I can pick loads of them at one time mm. and mm. it's really easy. They're, they're just a quick blanch and there's yeah. all sorts of fun dressings you can do on them and you get great colors. Mm. They grow, tend to grow a yellow a blue and lots of the regular greens. Yeah. And we use them a lot in arrangements. Right? And actually we use them in arrangements. Yeah. You used them last summer. You yeah. had black ones. All the Trofono Violetto ones I grew. Mm. I put them Tro- in the arrangements. Yeah, kind of just picked we picked these stems with kind of, you know, a clump of beans hanging off it. And um and they went the whole thing in the bowls, down the tables with other flowers, but yeah, that was great. They look good with sweet peas and peas and... Yeah. Love that. Love that idea of picking them. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. There's lots of that. There's lots of veg that ends up on the tables, um, on the tables as well. That's very constant spry. She would have, she would have loved you. She would have thoroughly approved. <laughs> and of the bearded Iris, actually. Okay, and I'm back to Jess playing ping pong now. Okay. I like something called plume poppy. Yeah, this is even though I say that I don't use much greenery, I do really like this one because of its very theatrical length. It grows huge and wild. We have it all in the sort of spread, it's invasive actually. It's a bit invasive now, but it's sort of spread everywhere, and it has these amazing matte, very matte green leaf mm. that looks like it's not going to hold, but actually holds really well. And when you cut it in water, and the colour's just really fantastic. It goes with like, I find it goes with pinks and yellows and it's got this amazing like purple stem. It's a dusty green. Almost. It's a dusty green, yeah. Great. Dusty matte green. And it's just big and theatrical and you pop it in, a, in an urn with some white flowers and you've got, you've got a wedding ceremony done. And do you um, do anything to condition it or do you literally just pick them and plonk them in? I literally pick it and plonk it in. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. It's funny because it looks, it feels that kind of soft rubbery texture that you think is going to go flop immediately, but weirdly it doesn't. Wow. Do you know the Latin name of that one? Um, I think it's called Maclela. M-A-C-L-E-A-Y-A. Oh, Ah, so the perennial one. Okay, yeah, Yeah. I know exactly what you mean now. The the, the, huge white flowers with the yellow centre. Ah, oh, yeah. yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Absolutely. How lovely. Great. Well, I'm going to pick that. That's a really good tip. Um, so back to Connie. Lots of courgettes and squash. Yeah. Again, because mainly the squash is all for their funny looks and shapes, yeah. which end up on the table. Yeah. Our sister Poppy's birthday is in October and she's kind of got into this habit of inviting she everyone as she goes. Lunch. Yeah, she insists on this sort of bottomless harvest lunch every October Lovely. and where she invites everyone to her workshop and I started growing lots of the weirdest shape squashes to go to kind of fill her workshop with so I choose there's a one called Rugosa di Frilli which is kind of a pimply mm. pimply oblong Marina de Ch of Choggia oh uh, yes that you you grow and Lots of tromboncinos. Yeah. And actually, I got into, I don't know if you know it, Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds Catalogue. Oh, you yes. Come up with that. Yeah, the American. And there's just, yeah, American one, and you can order these bonkers heirloom seeds from, that. and there was this, there's a bean snake that grows around, it kind of grows like a tromboncino. It's actually a bean. Wow. But I think they, it's also called a Chinese python bean. Wow. And it grows round and round and round and round, kind of miles long, if you can if you can get it right. It it doesn't always germinate, but one year it did. Fantastic. And and you can kind of put that down kind of a, a long table of four trestles and it's just this bonkers bean that goes mm. miles. And then fill it with all these wobbly squashes Great. and pumpkins. Pumpkins. And, quite I'm yeah. quite a fan of hollowing out a pumpkin and putting loads of dahlias in. Oh yeah. You just use pumpkin as a vase. Pumpkin as a vase, quite fun. Nice. Very nice. So lots of that. Lots that they take up lots of space, but they're worth it. And also just the courgettes grow lots of courgettes just for eating. So useful. Yeah. Endless courgettes. Yeah, they're good. Yeah. And and also what what's great about growing courgettes is that you can pick them really, really small. Yeah. Which is really you can't buy that. So yeah. It's fun to have so many that you don't care about picking them when they're like the length of your finger. Yes, I it's so just, agree. You know, there's one coming straight behind it. Yeah. And that's such a treat because you can't, can't really buy that yeah. easily. Yeah, yeah. Completely, completely. Mm. Fabulous. Okay, number four, Jess. Number four, probably continuing the harvest theme, I'm going to say sunflowers. Lovely. Because they're big and theatrical. And I love the other, last summer we, or at the end of last summer we had a big wedding and I just picked a load and picked a load of corn on the cob from a local field. Mm. And it was just maize actually. Was it just maize? Yeah. And just put those and sunflowers in on a big plinth. Mm. And that was just really, I thought it was quite mm. stylish. When you, when there's not, well, if you don't want to use dahlias, I, th I find yes. them. It was very dramatic that. It was very dramatic. They're so yeah, and they come in all different colours. So at one, they're just so easy to grow, and mm. two, it's fun to grow. You've got a lovely one called Pro Cut Plum, which yeah, I grow a lot of. Um, and there's some fun white ones called Italian White. Mm. Yeah, um, and I know. Vanilla Ice. It's yeah. just quite fun because I feel people at, just imagine sunflowers big and yellow, but it's so fun yes. to show them that they yeah. come in you know crazy stunning colours, and actually they're. Really classy, I think. Yeah, mm. yeah, I so agree. I love them. Just instant drama. So, Con, over to you now. Um, salads, quite an obvious one, but yeah. always, again, just so handy to be able to go and pick like 10 salads at a time, 10 lettuces at a time. Yeah. To just yeah. fill a big bowl. Yeah. Uh, rather than, again, trotting off to buy yes. lots and lots of plastic bags of it. Couldn't agree more. So, loads of. Just regular, I just grow a lot of red salad bowl, actually. Mm. And another one, this Tom Thumb type one that this year called Maureen, which I'm really enjoying. Mm. A compact little lettuce. And actually, for a wedding, we did. Actually, it was that same event as the sunflowers. The sunflowers. Oh, yeah. Jess picked a load of some Baltist lettuce that ah. I had in the garden. I was rummaging through the garden looking for picking sunflowers and then I suddenly saw all Con's salads had bolted mm. lettuces and, and bolted. like these kind of three foot towers like yes. just were crazy tiered with the fluffy tops and we cut them all and I popped them in vases going along the tables and it was it was it was, was quite mad yeah. because it was in the in what's it, in? the I ICA ICA so it was this beautiful white oh, kind yes. of very 
grand, lovely, yes, clear, high ceilinged room, and then it was just filled with letters. Oh, brilliant! Letters. And they didn't they didn't flop because I've some no. no brilliant. Oh, that's I such think because they tip. were quite they were quite tough. They were quite tough by yeah. that time. Yeah, you know they had they had. I th- I think if you, if we had done it earlier or a soft lettuce, it would. I can imagine it. You say if you ever get married, you want your bouquet to be a lettuce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a nice bolted, bitter lettuce. <laughs> Very good. And so, Jesse, number five? Number five, I'm going to say poppies. Again, I could, I'm yeah. sort of thinking what I've been using recently. Yeah. But poppies, again, probably like bearded iris. People love them. Yeah. I don't know why everyone goes crazy for them. Mm. Oriental poppies. Mm. We've been using quite a lot of like raspberry queen. Mm. Corally ones. Very beautiful. Can't remember its name. You yeah. like the wiggly shapes. They I love, yeah, when you get very wiggly, wiggly. I'm a big fan of wiggly shapes and it's why we grow lots of flowers because the ones you buy at the market are all poker straight from Holland. Yeah. And I'm a big fan of wiggly, wavy, curlies. And if you grow them, then you get all those and, f- and forget them. You get pulled them out the hedgerows and if you forage as well. Yes. You, get, you get good shapes. But the wiggly poppies are really handy. Everyone loves them. If you burn their ends, they seem to go on for ages. Yeah, it's such a good tip that, isn't it? The burning, the stem end thing. The stem end, oh. yeah. And they so have they, lovely um, seed heads as well, don't they? The beautiful. So even when they lose, yeah, and even like this... On Saturday, a few of the petals had fallen off, but still it was stunning with its mm. yellow centre top knot. Mm. Yeah, sparkling top notes. It's a them. sparkling top note, I call them. Yeah. yeah. Fabulous. Okay, so number five for you, Con? Uh, tomatoes. Yeah, wonderful. Lots of, lots of tomatoes, lots of different coloured ones, chocolate cherry. Yeah. We and did, we use them a lot also. Again, again in they, weddings, got, they, 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 get, got, they get put on the table. Yeah. Yeah, um, tomatoes and roses. Tomatoes, roses, and nasturtiums is a good oh, mix. Nice. How nice! Yeah, how nice. And and then if you again, if you grow them, they come. You get them. It's funny as you get the you get the big fat ones, the Costa Luto Fiorenti one, yes. Fiorento. Yeah, and they kind of become in crazy shapes with all sorts of ridges and lines. And yes, they're a work of art in themselves. Do you know what that means? Apparently, Costa Luto means pleated. So it's pleated of Florence, and they 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 look like they're pleated, don't they? They're sort of like yeah, yeah. They look like a sort that's of exactly purse. it purse, yeah, Shakespearean purse. Now I couldn't agree more. And and how would you use them edible wise? Just I mean salads, salads, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some salads, basil, fun to have a black. I did something at the last time a black lots of black tomatoes, that black Russian tomato, yeah, and then black. Basil, yeah, great. And, you know, yeah. big dollop of white, yeah, yeah. buffalo mozzarella. Wonderful. It's quite dramatic. Fabulous. And so, Jesse, your last one, number six. My last one. I mean, this it was so hard to choose oh, six in general. <laughs> There's literally hundreds. Um, I'm going to say species tulips. Yeah, wonderful. Just because um, of their wiggly shapes. Again, yeah. their wiggly shapes. I get these historical ones from a place called Jackamund. Yes. I never yeah. say it. Yeah. And they're just really old varieties that are much smaller than all the others, but they're so elegant. And again, very easy showstoppers. Acuminata. Acuminata that... I've been using a lot recently. They sort of look like little flames. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. yeah. Um, or Sylvestri, the little yellow ones yes. that sort of open and close, open and close. And... The longer you leave them, the more I'll often, like if I'm doing a big event, I'll buy tulips at least a week before and put them in vases and just let them grow oh, towards wow. the light and create yeah. their, yeah, get a good shape going. So I always buy them as far in advance or pick them as far in advance as possible. So they really just settle into their shape. That's a lot of what you do. It, I think people often talk about vase time, you know, vase life. vase life, how long they last in the vase. But I think... A lot of the time for events, it's often about buying, making sure the flower is looking its best yeah. for that moment. Yeah. So actually buying it like days in advance and yeah. leaving them to open right up. No, like for instance, we've got another wedding on Saturday and I'll be picking up roses 
on tomorrow or Wednesday, just mm-hmm. so they really by Saturday are really singing. Yes, really open and really, really smelly and yeah, fabulous. And so, Con, your last one, um, leeks. Yeah, I just I find them very majestic, mm. sort of grounding. I just love a leek. Mm. Everything about it, and they go. They look great in the garden all winter, and there's great, just great for eating and picking soups and yes, and great for flowers too. The great, great incredible flowers, yeah, well. spike, yeah. beautiful, yeah. Mainly just grow one called Musselbra, yeah, really um, chunky one. Nothing really chunky one, yeah. Nothing that exciting, but I love their look and feel and taste. Have you discovered <clears throat> that purple one called? Is it called Saint Victor? That's, yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. I haven't grown it yet, but I did see it thinking that that, that looked great. That's, that should be, get, get on that one. Well, we could definitely uh, talk for hours, but yeah. thank you so much, both of you. Um, there's just sort of vast riches in there and, um, and it's lovely to chat to you and really good luck with all your events and thank you so much for being on. Yeah, not no, Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening to Grow Cookie to Range. And it was a real pleasure for me talking to Con and Jesse Booth. Next week, I'm going to have Arthur back. So Arthur's going to be appearing every so often in the podcast, which is so nice for me. So he's finished his writing his latest book, which we're going to talk about in a few weeks time. Anyway, we are back chatting about the things we've learned from our garden this year. And so new plants, new ways of planting, what we get from our gardens, really. See them. You can find more information, photos and advice sheets on all the plants and recipes we talk about on this podcast by heading to the show notes or at sarahraven.com forward slash podcast.